Good afternoon, folks. Welcome back to National 5 Chemistry. Just move my drink. Um, in the last lesson, we looked at a whole bunch of things, and we finished off with this concept of isomers. Isomers were molecules with the same chemical formula, but different structural formula or different structural shapes. Uh, and we had a look at, for example, I've gone, done a different one this time, we had a look at uh, C3H6, which can be either represented as propene, um, or as cyclopropane. Now, in today's lesson, I would like to come back to isomers. This is isomers 2, the molecule strike back. Well, Star Wars related joke there. Um, and I would like to cover a, a second flavour of isomerism, a second type of isomers. And I would also like to cover, so that's the first learning outcome. So I want a second type. I'll put that in inverted commas because it's not really a different type. But it's just a slightly more complex way of looking at it. A second type of isomer. And the other thing I'd, I'd have to like look at what's called systematic naming. So that's the proper way. Systemat My spelling is atrocious. Go and sack me and get a teacher who can spell properly. Systematic. That's not even systematic naming. My goodness. Systematic names. And I'll show you why simply saying butene is no longer good enough. But that's the second part of the video. Let's have a look at the first part of the video first, obviously. This is a molecule. Feel free to pause the video once again and challenge yourself to name that molecule without even thinking about it too much. It should come instantly to mind. And of course, it's butane. Uh, we can represent it a slightly different way. We can write it as... One, two, three, four. Full structural formula. If you're playing along at home, by the way, you could, of course, pause this video and try turning this into both the molecular formula and also the shortened structural formula. I'll give you the answer uh, up here in this little bit here for both of these versions. So if you pause me just now, and you can have a go at doing that. C4H10, without even thinking about it, CNH2 and plus 2. The shortened one's a bit more complex, so CH3 and CH2 and CH2 and then CH3. By the way, something I forgot to mention last video um, is that uh, you can actually combine, if you've got multiple CH2s, you could actually combine them in the centre, so you could also show it like this, and I have seen this representation Although not very often, but I have seen it being used. Two. So one, two CH2s, and then CH3 at the end. Anyway, back to my main point. Is there a second way to represent this? By the way, before we go any further, can we have a look at the difference in the real world shape of butane compared with the way we sort of squash it flat down into two dimensions? This is a three-dimensional version, which you notice is free to rotate. So that is still butane. It's not cyclobutane. Um, because it's still C4H10, whereas cyclobutane would be... You tell me what cyclobutane would be. Uh, is there a way to make an isomer of this? It would seem not at first glance. Can I, can I rotate this round at the end, by the way, and show you that that is still butane, which means if I drew this a slightly different way, see if I took this end group here, and bent it up or down out of the way. And I could do the same with this one as here. This, what I'm about to draw, is most definitely not an, an isomer of butane. But it is how the SQA will try and trick you into thinking it's an isomer. At first glance, it looks like it might be. It look oh yeah, it was rearranged. No, you haven't. This is like a strand of spaghetti. You can take hold of the ends and straighten out, and you still have butane. There is no change. So is there any way at all to keep four carbons, ten hydrogens, but have a different shape, entirely different shape? Now, this is a toughie. So if you want to pause the video and try and challenge yourself, you knock yourself out. If you can get it, I'll be most impressed. I know a few people who might be able to do it. It's actually way easier if you have the molecules in your hand. So I'm about to show you here how we can make a proper isomer of butane. This is not an isomer. Simply bending the ends up or down does not cut it. 
But if you were to actually pull the end off the molecule and swap it, it being the carbon, let's swap the carbon that was on the end here. Let's pop it on the center, what is now the center, and pop that hydrogen back on the, there. Now we end up with that molecule. Now that molecule still has four carbons and still has 10 hydrogens, but it's most definitely not the same structure. Oh look, a perfect candidate for an isomer. Same molecular formula, different structure. How the heck do we write this? Three carbons in a row. Imagine pulling, plucking that off of there, pulling that hydrogen off there, and basically we swap these positions. So you end up with this CH3 group on here. Um, this has not changed. This hydrogen is still there. Uh, that is that. And we replace this with the hydrogen that we plucked off the center. That there, guys, is C4H10. And that is a proper isomer of that. So you can get isomers within the family. What you have to do is, pr is pluck off chunks of it and... Chunks. You know, that CH3 group off the end here. Pull that off entirely and replace it, swap it with something that used to be in the middle of the chain. Let me show you um, how to do that on a larger scale. So we're back with one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, pause and tell me what the name of this molecule is if you like. We're back with this molecule here. And what I would like to do is on this side of the page, I'd like to try and construct proper isomers of that molecule. And on this side of the page, I'm going to construct fake isomers of this molecule. So we'll do proper ones in purple, we'll do fake ones in red. I, I didn't put the hydrogens in, uh, just for speed and for clarity. Because basically we're interested in the, the carbon skeleton of this molecule. So... I suppose the easiest one would be to pluck off one of these and plunk it somewhere in the middle. So we would do one, two, three, four, five, and we could pop that one on there, for example. Uh, we could do that again. We could do it with this one. So if we detach that and pop it somewhere in the middle of the... You can't detach it, by the way, and put it back on this carbon here because that's the same as you started with. You've also got to go at least one carbon in, so this attached to that carbon, not to that one. So let's attach it to this carbon here, for example. So we would end up with one, two, three, four in our basic skeleton now. This one down here, and we've popped that one onto, we'll just, We'll move it up to the top here. Please remember this whole molecule can twist and turn so there's no such thing as up and down. Now let's just check I haven't done this wrongly. If I've done it wrong, made a mistake, you get to laugh at me. Point and laugh. One, two, three, four, five, six. And let's just check the hydrogens. It should be 14, of course, because this is hexane. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So these here are proper different isomers to each other. In red here, I'll draw you one that is not a different isomer. Because this is exactly the same as this molecule. These are identical to each other. All I've done is rotate that middle bond. That's all I've done. Just turn it like that. It's the same thing. So that is not a an isomer. Um, I'll just go back. That's it. Well done. Just draw on your hand, hey. Um, let me draw another one. This is the most common one that uh, you will try and be tricked by. One, two, three, four, five, six. For reasons that I covered on the previous piece of paper, that is precisely the same as that. So that is not an isomer either. Also, um, a 
at first glance, this looks quite a good candidate because the carbon is not on the end and just rotated around. It's actually one carbon in. This, this CH3 group is one carbon in from the end. So it looks as if it could be another one. Oh yeah, until you realise that this is precisely the same as this. All I've done is I've turned the molecule by 90 degrees. Which is why it's an awful lot easier to see it when you have these molecules in your hand. Um, so that's the first concept I wanted to tackle today. Uh, folks, the fact that there is a second sort of way of constructing isomers where you stay within the same homologous series. We're now no longer swapping across homologous series, we're staying within the same homologous series and we are ripping the end of the molecule and popping it somewhere else on the skeleton, on the carbon skeleton. You can't pop it just one carbon back in though. That's the same thing. You've got to go at least into the middle of the chain somewhere. The second thing I would like to tackle today is names. Let me get a fresh piece of paper. Now, let's start with uh, systematic names for the alkanes. Why do we even need systematic? Do we know the names of the alkanes already? Methane, ethane, propane, butane? Well, I just showed you on the last page the fact that this molecule here and this molecule here have identical formula but different structures. Quick reminder, that of course was the definition of an isomer. So you can't call them both butane. This is, this isn't. Now this is what are called branched molecules. And here's the way to name molecules which have got a proper branch on them. Step one, find the longest continual chain of carbons. That is your basic skeleton. So if we have a look, step one on here, we have one, two, three carbons in a row. That's our longest chain. So this is basically, that's our skeleton. Step number two, is find and identify any branches that are stuck onto your basic skeleton. So I can see a methyl, I sort of, sorry, I'm skipping ahead, I do apologize. I can see a CH3 branch here. There's only one branch on here, it's nice and simple. Step, so that's step two done. Um, step three, Number the carbons in your skeleton, starting at whichever end of the skeleton is nearest to a branch. So number the carbons in your skeleton. And you don't always do left to right numbering, because there's no left and right. You can pick and flip these over. So we number the carbons starting at whichever end is closest to this branch. Now in this case you can see it makes no difference. This end is here and this end is here. So just for simplicity we'll go left to right here. One, two, three. We need there. Uh, excuse me, just two seconds. And the last step, um, step four, is to name the molecule properly. Now, how do you name the molecule? You put the branch name and the position, and then you name the basic skeleton after that. That's not very clear, but I'll show you exactly what I mean here. This branch here, has got one carbon in it, and one carbon is meth. So we call the branch here the methyl branch with a YL at the end. Uh, it's a methyl branch, and it's on carbon number two. So we actually say this is 
dash methyl. So the, you name the branch first, the position, and the size of the branch. And then after that, you have a space, and then you have your basic skeleton. So this is known as 2-methyl propane. We don't call it butane. I know it's got the same formula as butane, but as you can see, it's not the same molecule. It's an isomer of butane, and it's called 2-methylpropane. We'll run through that again. Why do we get this name here? Well, basically, our skeleton here is the longest continuous chain of carbons, which is 1, 2, 3. So that's basically propane. It has got a branch, though. It's got a 1-carbon, a CH3 branch, stuck onto it. So we have to tell the reader where that branch is and what size is that branch. We tell them where it is by numbering the carbons in the basic skeleton. We start nearest the end to the branch. And in this case, it didn't matter. We could have called it 1, 2, 3 or 1, 2, 3. It would still end up being the same formula. And the last of all is you have your basic skeleton and in front of the basic skeleton, you put the position and the size of the branch. It's on the second carbon and it's a methyl branch because it's got one carbon. If it was a larger branch, it would be ethyl or propyl branches. How does that sound? Let me do one more simple example, then we'll do a sneaky example, SQA style. So, sorry about that, that's really scruffy. Um, what is going on here? I said to find the longest continuous chain of carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that means the basic skeleton is hexane. Um, I said to identify the branches. Now, we've only got one branch here, and it's one carbon long. Um, so we have to number the skeleton, starting from the end nearest the branch. So in this case, we're going to go... Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and lastly, we compile the name of this molecule. So this is a methyl branch. It's on position two. Uh, so this is two methyl. And the basic skeleton has six carbons and they're all single bonds. So that is hexane. Now you see why you need to know these names instantly to mind. So you don't have to think about it. Six? What's six again? No, go and learn it. So 2-methylhexane. Let me show you a very sneaky one, though. Now, at first glance, this doesn't look that difficult. It looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so it looks like pentane. And if this is a multiple choice, you can bet your backside this would be one of the answers. And this branch here is going to be a propyl branch. One, two, three carbons in it, so propyl. And all we'd need to do is work out the position of it. And it's bang in the middle of this chain, isn't it? So it doesn't make any difference. One, two, three. Isn't this just three propyl pentane? No, is a sad answer. Because we're used to always seeing them across like this, and they're just going automatically across like this. Watch this. One, two, three, four, five. Longest chain? No, it's not. One, two, three, four, five, six. Isn't that nasty? Remember I said they were like spaghetti strands. So we can grab hold of this carbon here, grab hold of this carbon here, and straighten this chain here out into one big chain. And now it actually, and this, this here becomes the branch. So if we grab hold of the, that and that and straighten it out there, um, we end up with, and then this branch here is on the one, two, three, the third carbon. And it's only two carbons in size. So this is the true molecule. And this is our basic skeleton. And this is a branch. So, uh, we can't number any random direction now because this branch is closer to this end than this end. So, one, two, three. This is actually 
three ethyl one, two, three, four, five, six hexane. That's probably all I want to do with these videos uh, just now. I systematic names are not finished though, because if you notice today, I was only doing systematic names for the alkenes. We need to do systematic name for the alkenes, but that can wait until another lesson. Thanks for listening, folks. Bye-bye.